My name is Tom Barnes, uh, Environmental Science Associates. Is, uh, uh, we're a consultant to the uh, Santa, Monica, uh, Santa Margarita Water District. Um, and uh, we are preparing environmental uh, compliance documentation for the San Juan Watershed Project. So we very much appreciate you coming here tonight. We've got a nice turnout uh, in the rain and um, much appreciated. Um, I've got about a 20 minute uh, uh, presentation that will describe the project. Um, uh, go over the purpose of, of why we're here, uh, a little bit about the project and about the California Environmental Quality Act and how it works, um, and, uh, and then a little bit about the environmental topics that, the, that we'll uh, uh, look at in our environmental impact report, and we'll go into schedule. But the real reason we're here is to get public input on our process. We're just initiating this CEQA process, and uh, uh, as part of this initiation, we're really uh, looking for input. This is a scoping meeting. So um, as, as I go through my presentation, I'll, I'll, I'll probably, you'll probably get questions in your mind about certain things. Um, and we have uh, district staff here available after the meeting to talk to you about your questions and, and provide some answers. I'm not really here to provide answers so much today as to get your input. So we'll go through that process and through that CEQA process of really understanding what your concerns might be regarding this project. And then after that, uh, we can really talk about some of the issues. Uh, we'll be, the uh, district staff will be uh, here available to chat uh, next to these demonstrations that we've got out here. So with that, um, I also wanted to say, uh, before we get started quite, um, that if you sign up on the mailing list, um, or if you sign up on the sign up sheet in the front door here, then you'll be, uh, you'll be sure to get uh, all the notices uh, for the rest of the project as it moves forward. So if you don't want the notices, you don't need to sign up. But if you would like to be notified of our next meetings, please do uh, sign the sign up sheet here and you'll get those. <clears throat> so a brief summary of the project itself. Uh, we're going to talk about the San Juan Watershed Project. Uh, it is a, uh, a, an opportunity that is started by the Santa Margarita Water District and the South Coast Water District, um, uh, both member agencies of the San Juan Basin Authority, uh, which is a groundwater basin, uh, a, a, a joint powers authority, to manage uh, local groundwater supplies uh, through capture and recharge of, um, of surface water within Tribuco, Arroyo Tribuco and, and San Juan Creek. It's really a local water supply project. And it's really, its purpose is to develop a local water supply to reduce independence of uh, uh, or reduced dependence on imported water. There is a website, and it's really easy, sanjuanwatershed.com. Any information you want on it, we'll be uh, putting up, uh, posting in the uh, sanjuanwatershed.com. You can go there and find as we move forward with the project. <clears throat> as I said, today's purpose is to comply with the California Environmental Quality Act requirements for scoping and public outreach. Um, so uh, we're really initiating uh, an, impact, an impact report. CEQA requires that when a, a lead agency decides that to, to do an environmental impact report, to prepare a report, that they start with a scoping meeting. That's what we're doing today. A little bit about CEQA then, just to give you a, a background on the California law. Uh, started uh, in, in, in 1970. Uh, really provides for transparency in government decision making. It's really a disclosure uh, act uh, that uh, provides for uh, 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 public agencies and decision makers with uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, show the work, essentially, and uh, identify as a decision-making tool, it presents the evidence that supports conclusions that decision makers really need uh, to support the, the uh, uh, projects. So every project uh, requires this uh, careful analysis and transparent view of how decisions are made. But it also identifies potential impacts, environmental impacts of projects, and in so doing, uh, the opportunity to develop mitigation measures to minimize or to avoid those impacts. So this is sort of a color-coded uh, 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 schedule flowchart of how the process works, and we're in the green uh, portion of this. We're just starting. This is a notice of preparation, NOP, uh, scoping meeting, and uh, the NOP, notice of preparation, was published in December for a 30-day uh, uh, period. Uh, we've actually extended that longer than, than that uh, required period. <clears throat> and uh, and, and um, uh, we are here to get comments on what we should look at in the EIR. Solicit your input on what are your concerns, what should the EIR contain. When that period is done, uh, we'll go into the blue section, the middle section, where we'll write the EIR itself. We'll do the analysis, we'll uh, 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 prepare a, a, an, Im an impact report that will have a 45-day minimum review period, public review period. If you've signed the sign-up sheet, you'll get a notice for when, that, uh, for when that EIR is published. 
And you'll get the opportunity then to look at the analysis and see uh, for, your, uh, for yourself uh, how you feel about it and comment on it. Um, we'll have another public meeting, uh, likely in the same location, but not sure exactly, but there will be another public meeting. And you'll have an opportunity to comment then as well. And then we'll move to the, uh, the orange. Uh, at the end of this process is an orange period where uh, we, pr we prepare the final environmental impact report. And that responds to comments, makes changes uh, based on the comments that we received in the project description or in the analysis or in the mitigation measures. And then that final EIR uh, gets uh, presented to the board of directors for the Santa Margarita Water District. And uh, they have the opportunity to consider uh, that the EIR was done uh, sufficiently and then to approve the project. Again, just the NOP is required. It's a scoping process, and it really is to get your uh, stakeholder concerns early. It's a process to get to understand early uh, what's, what's, uh, what, what's uh, at, at stake here. Okay, so a little bit about uh, the project that we're gonna be talking about. Again, it'll be implemented, uh, so it's a project that is going to be implemented by Santa Margarita Water District and the South Coast Water District, and it'll benefit all the member agencies of the San Juan Basin Authority. Um, in 2014, the, the authority prepared a, facilities, a groundwater and ma a facilities management plan, which was essentially uh, a, a look forward on how to better manage the groundwater basin uh, underneath uh, these creeks, this creek system uh, in, in southern uh, Orange County here. Um, and one of the uh, most achievable objective uh, that came out of that report was to augment stormwater capture, uh, really to try to be within these the creeks when available, just like uh, this afternoon when I came down here, I stopped to, to look over at the creek over the bridge, and sure enough, it's pouring water, uh, just, just uh, going right to the ocean, lots and lots and lots of water. Well, that's an opportunity. It's a local uh, a facility, and it's an opportunity to capture water. Um, this project r recognizes that and has uh, developed ways of, of, of trying to capture as much of that stormwater as possible. So the project would be uh, constructed in two and multiple in multiple phases. Uh, and phase one has uh, is what we're really here to talk about. Uh, it'll include the installation of three rubber dams within San Juan Creek and uh, or Arroyo Trabuco Canyon. So I'm not sure if I have the pointer uh, effectively, but th this graphic shows the project location in the lower left corner as just at the confluence of the Royal Tribuco Creek and San Juan Creek, way at the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the watershed, close to the ocean with respect to the entire watershed. You can see the purple line shows where all, all the rainfall that falls in that whole area comes down uh, the mountains and, and uh, uh, it comes into the confluence of the San, San Juan Creek right before it gets to Dana Point. Our project would be right at that confluence. And this is an outline of uh, the creek right now um, at the confluence. So the Royal Tribuco goes up straight up uh, the graphic here uh, um, and San Juan heads off uh, to the northeast. And this would be the area where we would place three rubber dams to capture as much stormwater as we could. I'll have another graphic about that and show you a little bit more about that. And there's a poster that gives you a, bit, a little bit better idea of what the location really looks like right now. But these uh, dams would be in the creek, um, and uh, there would also be possible uh, modifications to the groundwater treatment facilities as well. The existing treatment facilities that have been built in San Juan uh, Capistrano uh, might get some uh, uh, opportunities for uh, improvements as well as part of phase one. So this is the graphic. Um, as you can see in the creek, um, uh, it's, a, it's a concrete lined uh, a flood control channel essentially right now. Um, it does have some uh, urban runoff in it. Uh, but it's pretty uh, 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 lacking vegetation or lacking habitat values right now. And you can still see uh, that, but the, the EIR will certainly look at uh, what's there now. This is an example of rubber dams. I don't know if any of you got the chance to look at our video of how the rubber dams automatically uh, can rise and, uh, and be lowered effectively. It's really a, a, actually an ingenious way of impounding water um, and but letting it, uh, letting large uh, storm flows uh, go by without uh, uh, affecting or without damaging its flood control capacities of the of the channels. Um, the, these uh, 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 dams in in, our, in the Tribuco uh, and, and San Juan Creek would cause a bank to bank pond ponding, and a series of three uh, uh, ponds 
um, that would be full and the water would be captured and infiltrate through the ch uh, soft bottom channel that exists now into the groundwater basin as a means of augmenting the water in the groundwater. Um, they would also be designed with a concept of, of fish passage uh, in these dams as well. So phase, the, uh, phase one will be the, the dams themselves. Phase, uh, the future phases could uh, 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 be uh, a broader application of, these, of this concept of catching stormwater and infiltrating it through the in-stream channels. Um, so uh, subsequent phases in the EIR will look at this at a program level, meaning it'll look at it in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sort of a, a higher level of detail, um, but thinking that perhaps we could put more dams uh, in, the, in the creek as well. Um, and also not just uh, uh, stormwater or urban runoff, but also perhaps recycled water. So we could uh, in the future look to put recycled water in the creek and create impoundments um, uh, with local uh, 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 treated water that could augment uh, uh, groundwater as well. Um, we would manage the groundwater volume through uh, construction of additional facilities, uh, which would be uh, conveyance facilities, treatment facilities, and extraction facilities we could, to manage the groundwater levels. Uh, with more water going into the ground, uh, the groundwater level would be, need to be managed so that it didn't get too high um, and, uh, 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 and find an optimal way of, of managing it. So we'll look at this at the program level, and, and those, those, these next phases are still really conceptual. Our EIR will cover all the topics in, in, uh, in, in the SQL guidelines. Uh, there, we won't leave anything out. So A to Z here. Um, uh, and particularly, we'll look at uh, the, the biological resources in the channel and the flood control um, um, aspects of the channel, um, uh, as, well as, as well as all the other topics. Uh, In-stream uh, habitat values, fish passage values, riparian values will be looked at carefully. We know that uh, that that'll, that'll be an issue, a uh, concern of, of, of certain stakeholders. Groundwater is also groundwater quality and aquifer volume and mounding effects. All of that will be looked at carefully. We'll also look at growth inducement and we'll look at alternatives, water supply alternatives. So this then is the schedule of our process. Scoping period ends on uh, February 2nd. Uh, uh, so uh, if you could get your comments in and thoughts about what we should look at and, and, and what your concerns might be by February 2nd, and then we will uh, come back with a draft EIR sometime late spring or early summer, uh, thinking to uh, uh, publish or, the, or, or certify the EIR, uh, uh, the final EIR in the fall of 2017. So we're on an aggressive schedule, uh, but we feel it's doable and um, uh, looking at the fall of 2017 for finishing uh, our, our CEQA process. And that ends my very brief presentation. Um, uh, again, more uh, thoughts about uh, the San Juan Watershed uh, project will be on this uh, website. Uh, it, the period closes on the 2nd. And um, my, my name and address is on the notice of preparation, the NOP, for you to send your comments to. Um, and I'll leave this up on the, on the screen. And then what I'd like to do is um, just have a show of hands, or, or not a show of hands, but if you just raise your hand and have a question for me or a, a comment, I'll write it on the board here to make sure uh, that, that we capture it. Um, but you can also put your comment on a comment card that we have on the front table. Um, and uh, um, so with that, I'll just open it up. Anybody, anybody have any comments for us for the NOP? Yeah. Uh, How about safety for kids, young kids going down here? Is, it, is the depth going to be that they could uh, drown or kids wanting to fish or have a raft down there or something? Yeah, that's a good comment. Uh, my question is, is there someone from the San Juan Capistrano Water Department representing? Is there someone from the San Juan Water Department here today? And are you in contact with them? We are in contact with them for sure. I don't think that there's anybody here today from San Juan Water Department. 
but we can get you contacts, and, uh, and there's certainly folks from South Coast and, uh, and Santa Margarita here today, and, um, and they will be by the, um, uh, Don and Catherine, you want to just be maybe by these boards over here at the end of the meeting, and we can get contact information over there. And there's Catherine right there holding her hand up, and, and you can talk to Catherine, uh, uh, any questions at all, and there's Don Bunce next to her. Um, and, and please, please don't hesitate to get contact information from the uh, uh, city folks. Let me just I'll write that down. How often do they monitor for contamination for mosquito larvae and all of this uh, for non-running water and other contaminants? Yeah. For, for, for vector control and, and, uh, and, and mosquitoes and other contamination. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, uh, you mentioned growth inducement. What is it that you mean by growth inducement? I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, and, and, and reply to that. Um, and I'll write it on the board as well. And, and growth inducement is a concept really in the CEQA process that we uh, are compelled to look at uh, through the, the, the guidelines uh, of, of the process where we'd see if a project um, would induce growth, would, would cause growth, would be a directly related to causing growth. And a project that comes to mind would be if you are building a sewer system out into an undeveloped area or a water, if you're building your water supply system into an undeveloped area, that's sort of a classic example. So it's just something that we'll hit. And with water supply, we always want to make sure that when we're augmenting water supply, we understand uh, how that relates to the, the plans, the growth plans and general plans of the region. So I'll, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a geologist, and I want to know a couple things. What's the area that's planned to be used for recharge? Do you, anybody know offhand in acres? No? Nope. The question I had was, uh, is it known whether there is adequate uh, soil uh, underneath the percolation area? Uh, perhaps there's uh, five feet of clay, and if you try to perk anything in there, it's not going to work at all. Let me, let me, uh, we have done extensive analysis about that. Um, certainly uh, being in the stream corridor is, is why we're there, because that's where the best area to infiltrate is. But Mark Wildermuth is here as well. Um, and you might want to talk to Mark, a hydrogeologist, about uh, uh, some of the studies that they're on no, ongoing. He, he's a geohydrologist. Ah. He'll never say he's a hydrogeologist. Okay. I realize that the uh, sides are concreted and we have to not block the flood control aspect, but it sure would be nice to do some, have some more natural vegetation in the channel so that we could have something approaching a natural riparian woodland. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a comment to follow up that comment on uh, natural riparian habitat. It's my understanding that the existing flood control facility is deficient hydraulically to convey the 100 year storm. Uh, enhancing or putting in more riparian habitat will increase the, I guess, deficiency of the channel. So right now it's a self-cleaning facility. In other words, there's very little habitat and it, it's a movable bed facility, meaning that it's, the sediment moves during the storms and it kind of self-cleans itself. And that way it maintains a fairly decent flood control capacity. But if we start putting habitat in there, trees and vegetation, that's going to diminish very rapidly. And I know that we just 
got out of the floodplain not too long ago, and could this put us right back into the floodplain where we would start paying five to six thousand dollars a year for flood insurance? Yeah, good, good comment. That's part of the assessment. Hi, I'm Rick Wilson with Surfrider Foundation, and of course we're interested in how this might affect ocean water quality and also the sediment delivery uh, that replenishes our beaches that comes down on San Juan Creek. So, you know, that may be positive or negative, but it needs to be evaluated in the EIR. Um, and then I have a second comment. I'll wait for you to finish writing. Okay, the second one is, uh, as I'm sure a lot of people here know, there's another nearby project plan, which is South Coast Water District's uh, Ocean Water Desalination Project. So I wanted to make sure that when this project is analyzed that they also consider sort of the synergistic or not uh, effects of, of both projects together in terms of how they would affect uh, groundwater quality and groundwater level. I would, excuse me, I would be interested in the, uh, the groundwater levels that are ultimately to be maintained with infiltration and pumping, and particularly the impacts that that would have on upland, veg or, pardon me, upstream vegetation. The San Juan Basin watershed extends uh, well into Casper's Park, and a lot of native vegetation is potentially affected by uh, the infiltration, which is a good thing, and the pumping, which is the opposite of that. And uh, would be interested in maintaining uh, an adequate uh, groundwater for the native vegetation further upstream. Yep, got it. It's my understanding the Orange County Flood Control District hired PACE consultants uh, for around $700,000 to do a detailed study of the um, <clears throat> invert of the channel to come up with um, an invert stabilization study or invert stabilization plan and design of grade stabilizers for the channel. Um, I notice you're putting in three rubber dams. Have these been coordinated with that study so that they'll coincide with the um, grade stabilizers that are being planned by the Orange County Flood Control District? <coughs> One other comment also. The Orange County Flood Control District spent millions of dollars putting in steel sheet piles behind the concrete lining out here. And with the, I guess, proposal that in the future they're going to remove the concrete lining and allow the channel to widen to the steel sheet pile, uh, widening the channel. Um, are the rubber dams, as they're proposed, going to be constructed to the existing concrete lining or to the proposed ultimate configuration of the steel sheet pile? And if the, if the rubber dams are designed to the concrete lining, does that then make it difficult for the Orange County Flood Control District to then widen the flood control channel in the future to provide 100-year flood protection to the community because the rubber dams will then be a throwaway cost? Great coordination questions, yes, and there's coordination happening. How much is this going to cost and who's going to pay for it? Yeah.
Yep, good question. And there's folks you can talk to after the meeting, as I said. Yes. I have just a couple of comments. Okay. And it kind of has to do with funding. Should we receive federal funding from this? Will the EIR be able to accommodate the EIS that might be needed? And why not go down that path now with the EIR EIS combo? Will the EIR EIS address water rights? And you didn't have on your last uh, list the tribes, and I know um, sometimes those are just included under cultural, but um, tribal interests, of course, a couple of years ago are becoming more important. Thank you. Yes, all good questions. The uh, watershed um, from the ocean up to the Cleveland Forest is about 18 miles. All of the improvements that are being proposed in the lower watershed, the lower four miles, um, collectively is about $300 million. Is there any consideration from a study and engineering standpoint being considered for managing the watershed above the five freeway up to the Cleveland Forest, which is about 15 miles, to more appropriately manage <clears throat> the effects of the flow that's coming down through the watershed that causes the problems when it hits the concrete channels. Uh, I'd like to propose an alternative to be considered for the EIR, which is to change the location for uh, groundwater recharge or diversion of the Tribuco Creek to the O'Neill Regional Park in the 100-year floodplain. O'Neill Regional Park. It's a 200-acre area. Yeah, you bet. No, keep, keep coming. This is why we're here. Um, several years ago, um, I recall that there was a, a lawsuit about contamination of the near surface aquifer. Um, I, I think it was one of the oil companies or the gas stations uh, may have contaminated the groundwater. Um, do you know if this particular project uh, is going to be af affecting that plume or if that plume's been taken care of? Important considerations, yes. More comments? More comments? Yeah. So one other comment. Yeah. Uh, ar Arroyo means creek. So you're saying Arroyo yeah. Tabuco Creek? So well, you might as well say Arroyo, Tribuco, or Tribuco yeah. Creek. Pick one or the other. <clears throat> that may just be me, so I apologize for that, but you're absolutely right. What will be the impacts to the potential steelhead migration, and uh, will it enhance their potential, or will they be able to pass through the temporary dams? Okay. Uh, Roger Buto, Clean Water Now. To second what my colleague Rick Wilson at Surfrider was broaching, I think the general topic is sequential or piecemeal uh, filing. So if the uh, 
if somehow uh, the uh, ocean desalination project and this particular project can somehow uh, rectify any disparities or any future challenges. For those that don't know it under CEQA, you're not allowed to submit sequential or piecemeal filings. They have to be integrated in some kind of a regional plan. So at some point, if that could be addressed, uh, we'll be, believe me, we'll be submitting probably many, many pages of comments, but I wanted to just uh, clarify that and thank Rick for bringing it up. Look forward to the comment letter. <clears throat> I'm gonna say that louder. We look forward to the comment letter. And, and it, that goes with it for everybody. So anyone who, uh, your comments are captured here for sure, but um, uh, we'll, ha we'll have them in the record. Um, uh, but uh, written comments are, are, are welcome as well. Even if uh, you want to say the exact same things. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to really quickly introduce myself. I'm Megan U. Schneider. I'm the Division 7 Director for the Municipal Water District of Orange County. So I'm very happy to help represent all of you guys. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And this is literally down the street from my house, so welcome home. Thank you. <clears throat> any more comments? Yeah. This is a really detailed, esoteric question, but I just figured I'd ask it anyway. Um, the sheet pile that the Orange County Flood Control District put out here was designed uh, with a 75-year a design life, and that was assuming that it, it didn't have ponded water up against it. Is there any plans to do any kind of a corrosion study to see how the effects of the ponded water may reduce the design life of the facility? stand here for a minute. Any other comments? Anybody else? No? One last time? Okay. Thanks for coming tonight. That wraps up my portion. I think I'll give it back to Chuck and we'll, 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 we'll uh, uh, finish up the meeting. But thank you for coming and uh, folks will be around to talk about details and be able to maybe provide some more answers uh, to some of the questions. But I appreciate your participation. Before I close the meeting, I just want to recognize uh, another colleague, uh, Justin McCusker, the director on the Santa Monica Rio Water District is here. And of course, I neglected to mention uh, President Wayne Rayfield of the South Coast Water District and Andy Runhart, the general manager of the South Coast Water District. And there he is. Director Irvin and also uh, Dr. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Wayne. Interdict, introduce your director. Thank you, Chuck. I just wanted to point out that we have um, two uh, of our directors here, Dennis Erdman and Doug Erdman. And um, so we're well represented. Thank you very much. And uh, if I've left anybody out, uh, forgive me. <laughs> anybody else and are there any further comments from the audience before we close this special meeting yeah. yes sir and this doesn't have to do with anything to, to put up on the board there but i noticed the santa margarita water district is here and the south coast water district is here but this is directly right in the backyard of the city of san juan capistrano and why aren't they here and why aren't they uh, major stakeholders of this project Well, they would have to speak to as to why they aren't here. I know the city is aware of the project, and this session was widely publicized, so thanks for the question. Any other questions or comments? Okay, with that being uh, said, the meeting is now closed. Thank you.